Sir, like I don't know. You don't know. Don't you like any leaders? Like I'm very far from politics, sir. Like Not I don't politics. actually see anybody. Not necessarily be a politics. It can be. Sir, it might be from cricket or something else. Yes, it's absolutely. What do you can't you call him cricketer as a leader? Yes, absolutely. Yes, sir. Then my favorite leader is Rohit Sharma, sir. Like I, ad I admire him a lot, sir. Why? Why? Tell me the three like reasons. Like because, sir, why? even in the pressure situation, he handles the game, sir. Like I, uh, he controls the pressure, sir. Like he, uh, like I don't know how to say it, sir. He handles the game perfectly in the pressure situation, sir. So you like? Like he, tr he trusts his bowlers and the placements in his field positions, sir. Can do him. Anybody else? One more person want to add something? The leader and what do you like? What are, what are the skills you want to like him? Yes, Satya Dheeraj, APJ Abdul Kalam. Yes, go ahead. Why do you sir, like him? Sir, uh, first thing I like him, uh, he's the president of India. Then also he's very down to earth person, sir. Yes, simplicity. Simplicity you like, okay? And he's a very hard, uh, hard working person and determined, sir. Yeah, very hard working. Yes, Gautam, go ahead. Gautam? Sir, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, you are audible. Go ahead. Um, I'm inspiring Sundar Pichai, sir, the CEO of Google. Um, he is the uh, youngest one to reach that position, um, and he all. Breaking. I think you are a network issue. Just a minute. Sir, can you hear me now? Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I'm inspiring Sundar Pichai, sir, the CEO of Google, um, mm -hmm. and he is okay. the youngest one to reach that position. Um, he always said that uh, we should leave our comfort zone in order to reach uh, greatest success. Good. Very good. Fine. Okay. So today we are going to learn leadership, what is leadership, negotiation, and conflict management skills. These are skill sets very much essential to become successful both in our life as well as in the so, academic life. Yes. So my uh, net quality is very bad. Uh, can I turn off my video, sir? So, OK, you, all of you can turn off your video, yes. So we are going to analyze what is leadership and who is a good leader, what are the leadership qualities, and how can you, uh, and what you can enhance your leadership your skills let us see one by one and we will analyze. First of all, leader is a person who is trying to be in a very uh, literal sense, he will be better than a crowd. There is a crowd behavior, you know that uh, normally everybody says something, but the leader will try to become better than the crowd. First thing, you will identify leader as a distinctive personality, number one. Second thing, the leader tries to excel in his effort and work better than his fellow group peers. Then only he becomes a leader. Otherwise, everybody will be the common leader. Leader, he tries and he shows better ability than his peers. That's how he becomes a leader. This is another way. But if you look at the leadership, is a process of social influence which maximizes the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal. See, leader will never work for himself. Leader has to work for others. Because leader is to lead. Leader has to lead the team. It can team can be a small two, two member team, five member team, ten yeah, member team. Yeah. Even it can be lax, crows. That's how the leadership 
grow, what you call the potency grows. If you take a team leader, assume that you come to campus, I just uh, you fix some of your so class representative, you are a leader to the class. Then you join in a club, you become a president of the club, you become the president of the club to the entire college. Then you go to the company, you become a team lead, then you join as a manager, then you say, you quickly moving to the ladder, as, as Gautam was saying, Sundar Pichai, CEO, he's a leader for the entire Google. And similarly, if you take uh, somebody uh, on a political level, APJ Abdul Kalam was the president of India. He was the president for the entire India. He inspired the entire people. And his leadership was known to the whole India. Sundar Pichai leadership is known to the entire world because since his company is the global the company, obviously everybody knows that. So the, the, what we call the magnitude and intensity of leadership will change based on the leadership position, uh, a particular person, the type of leadership position. The chief minister is also a leader. Prime minister is also a leader. President is also a leader. These are very high level leadership. And a very normal level leadership, if you take your family, your father is a leader to a family or your mother must be a leader to a family. Then you will have your friends grow. You must be the lead in the team. Normally you will, what you call a positively dominate and you will positively influence your friends. This is how leadership works. But the very important thing you should not forget, leaders always make sure that they are achieving the goal. It will work for the entire team and to propel the team to achieve the goal. That's a basic thing. And then now uh, that leadership is a quality. Now let us come to an individual person as a leader. Who is a leader? A leader is a person who guides and inspires the subordinates. Subordinates, you know that, his fellow colleagues and the lower rank people or, on, on, or with the same rank people. He, he just guides and inspires them. He secures cooperation. See, when he is a leader, definitely he will handle the more than two to three people. So he will handle everybody in a positive way. He will secure cooperation because if there is no cooperation. The purpose of the leader is to, what they call, instill cooperation among the Members, this is one of the prime criteria to be a leader. And he creates confidence. Sometimes normal person, they lose confidence. They may think that they can't achieve. They can't go to the goal. They cannot reach. But leaders, they does. We take Vasco da Gama. When he wanted to explore the world through a CYH, most of the people, they lost hope. And almost, you know, he had to... He had, you know, he had faced so many difficulties before he reached. He wanted to discover. Can you tell me what, what he wanted to discover? Then where did he land? Come on. First code account. Sir, he wanted to discover a way, a way to come in India from Portugal. Was, was that his ambition? Actually, he way to find to... the way of yes, way to India. Was it the initial ambition for him? Someone? Yes, sir. sir. No, no. Is was it the first ambition, or did he wa want to try something else? Finally, he landed here. Uh, the business mm. of spices, sir. Mm -hmm. Spices. Okay. So, uh, see, finally, uh, that was the very hectic uh, travel. Sir, he wanted sir. to reach India by sea, sir. Mm -hmm. Fine. So the the travel was not easy, and yeah. most of the passengers who came with him, they they got into a disease. Then a lot of problems he faced. Sometimes he had to take care of things. There was certain rebel attitude also. Then he had to control. Finally, he reached uh, the Calicut. See, initially, if, if he had lost the faith, uh, obviously the entire team could have failed and they could have returned to their own place. And if you take any war again, 
the the commandant he has to give the instill he has to instill the confidence among the soldiers so that they'll they'll be able to fight even at the verge of defeat certain uh, great the uh, warriors they get the success even at the verge of defeat particular defeat because they instill confidence among the soldiers their followers and they get boosted and they work very hard they fight very hard finally they reach the success that's why the ba basic rule of a leader he has to create confidence among his followers and he builds a very positive work environment in case wherever he does he has to build a positive work environment and he maintains discipline without discipline there can there cannot be any team there cannot be any leader leader he lays the rule he shows the way and the, he makes the people to follow the uh, whatever the rule he follow he lays it that's what if you took at the japanese kaizen principle kaizen it's a principle management principle where you take the feedback from even from the it is a bottom up approach you will take the feedback from even bottom of the bottom employee and if he gives a good thing you take that suggestion just to you implement it for the whole organization so that that's one of the disciplines and there are so many principles like that so they maintain discipline in their level and they facilitate integration of organizational and personal goals see leadership doesn't mean that you work only for the team you don't worry about yourself no obviously you work for the team you you will uh, obviously you will be able to come up in a personal level also that's what he would try to integrate both organizational and personal goals because when you fix a goal which will be really good for organization but it is very bad for the personal the employee will not work hard heartedly so it's a very important aspect of a leader he has to synthesize both into what we call organization personal goal and then if they find it useful they work very hard they work double the amount that's the important duty of a leader and he works as a change agent whenever the, there is a change excuse me sir provided. yes um you said uh, something no sir uh, you can take the feedback from a bottom of employee mm -hmm. um uh, that's what kind of saying sir a variety found japanese kaizen k a i z e n kaizen principle just you can check kaizen principle they call it as kaizen thank you sir so he works as a change agent whenever there is a new rule comes first he will be the catalyst to bring that change see whenever you suddenly bring a new innovation in the company there will be a stiff resistance you need to handle that resistance because in general people are very uh, reluctant to accept the changes the reason is they need to come out of the comfort zone they will not be ready for that so whenever a change which is made in the company which has been made in the company which will push the employees to the out of their comfort zone and there will be a very very high resistance so here the leadership role leader is a very important person to make the people to accept the change he will be the catalyst for the change and he will boost the morale sometimes when the people are not confident they lose no no lose confidence and he will be the person to boost their morale morale no he will give a lot of input so he will back them whenever they are there is a problem and he will support them and uh, he will say that i'll be i'm here to help you in that way he'll give a confidence he'll boost morale these are the leaders basically they have to exercise these quality now top qualities of a good team leader let us see this is the previously i was telling you a general leader now it is about a, a team leader top qualities what are the top qualities of a team leader? first one leadership is not all about you it's not about you it is about others so you will not project you in the team you will project the entire team in case you always project yourself as an important person then nobody will have the habit to work they will not be comfortable to work 
So you always you bring the to call the team, the forefront. You will take take the back seat. Then the entire team will work for the success. But instead, you take the driver's seat. All of them are behind. No, you have to keep them. If you keep them behind, then they will not be really interested. That's that's a very important thing. Second one. Honesty, integrity, and humility. Leader doesn't mean that you are the boss to them. That's why the poor leaders they fail in the politics and everywhere because they try to boss over others. They think that they are the best in every aspect. They treat all the subordinates as inferior. That's the main reason the leadership will fail. And honesty and integrity. If you take all politicians. Why do you hate politics because of the dishonest and the, you will see everywhere the corrupt politician. They don't follow any integrity and honesty in their practices. All of full of lies, full of fraudulent things. That's why people in general, they don't like politicians. But however, there are leaders like Dr. Abdul Kalam, some very good leaders are very honest and they maintain high top integrity and they become inspiring personality to the people also. But general trend is quite opposite. And you will hold your team and yourself accountable means you will take responsibility for your failure, success. See, leader is not only whenever there is a success, you say that I am the leader, I did that. Leader is a person when there is a success, you should Give the credit to the team member. When there is a failure, he should take the credit that because of me only the team has failed. He is the inspiring leader. But actually, if you take in the normal leaders, whenever the good things happen, they say that only because of because of me it has happened. Whenever bad things happen, sir, I did very well. Only my teammates didn't do well. In that way, the people will behave. They are unfit to be a leader. And Good leaders make a decisive commitment to a vision. That should be a target. We work for the target. We work for a vision. And at every our aspect are highly centered around our vision. It is not simply working just like that. We have a destination. We need to reach the destination. But that you, you have to simply center around your goal, commitment to the vision. So every aspect you should be committed yourself to reach the final point. And you'll make your team also to understand that responsible. And know thyself and believe in thyself. They know very well who are they. The leader will know who is key and how the team is, what where the team has to reach and what kind of thing has to do. He will have a complete picture. Accordingly, he will guide the team, team, team members. And very importantly, Team leaders need to have effective communication, especially he must be, they must be a very good listeners because different people will come out with the different problems. So you must be in a position to listen to everybody's complaints, both complaint and appreciation. You should be a wonderful listener. In case you don't listen to the one person, then he will lose the confidence, he will lose the interest to work in the team. So the leader role is very complicated at certain time because you should balance. You cannot say that I am your member. Assume that you are the leader. I am your member. And myself, I am a member. Another teacher is a member. Then when I will say something else to you, another teacher will say something else to you. But you need to, you can't say that I am right or other teacher is right. You have to balance both. You should not you know, oppose both parties. You should not accept both parties. You should be a level-headed person. You should maintain a perfect equilibrium among the members. That's very important. That's what you should listen everybody, but take a decision after a, what you call a detailed analysis. Don't be a, what you call biased leader after listening to one party. If you take a decision, that will be the wrong decision. The last one, achieving goal in a good time. See, you wanted to reach a particular uh, goal. But if you reach the same destination after some time, for example, if 100 meters race, you need to cross probably the best will be the less than 10 seconds. But you you cross the 100 meter, but after 20 minutes, what is the point of crossing the boundary? There is no use. Something should have been done within 10 to 12 seconds, but you do it with after 20 minutes. It's of no value. 
So you should achieve the goal within the stipulated time. Even even achieving the goal after the stipulated time it may not be entirely useful. It may be total waste. So you have to be. You should know the timeline and when when you need to reach and when to achieve. And you have to instill a sense of timing among all your team members. These are the qualities of the top qualities of the leader, the team leader. Next to see leadership. There are principles. Initially, we have seen what the leader will do. Next, we have seen team leader. And now we see 10 principles of leadership. This is applicable to team leading, normal leader, great leader, everybody. You have to, everybody have to follow this principle if you want to be a leader. First, to know yourself and seek your self improvement. You are a leader. You want to be a leader means you should know about yourself. You should make sure that you are seeking self improvement every day, day by day, in every way. You should be updating yourself. That's why there is a one quote will go, you know, quote goes like this. Make sure that day by day, in every way, you are getting better and better. That's a basic mantra of leader. Day by day, in every way, you are getting better and better. It means you are progressing in the right way. Second, you have to be technically proficient. See, you are a leader for a car team, assume that. But you don't know about the car properly, but you are leading the team. Who will respond to you? Who will, what you call, give their ears to you? They never give any respect to you because you don't know anything about that particular thing. And how will they respect you? A leader must be better than the team members in all the aspects. Original leader. That no, see, if, if you have the same skill what the other person has, then why are you a leader? You must have something better than the other person. That's why you are a leader. If you are unable to showcase that, that the speciality, special talent, then you, do, you, you can no longer be a leader. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your action. That's what I already have told you in the first slide. You need to take responsibility for both positive as well as negative. If it is positive, give it to the team. Negative, you take credit. So that next time they will not make such kind of mistake. This is a very hardcore important thing. Make sound and timely decisions. That's what then he was talking about Rohit Sarma. And uh, he mentioned clearly that he takes a wonderful decision during the stressful situation. He identifies the proper bowler. He identifies the proper batsman and all these things. Because you can make a decision in a full composed way anybody can make a very good decision. But the real challenge is can you make such kind of decision when you are under tremendous pressure? You can, then you are a good leader. That is what the timely decision. Because in a cool and composed, comfortable nature, if you take decision that anybody can do that. But taking the right decision in the stressful situation is what makes the difference. A leader, the efficient leader will do that. And he will be the example. That's also we discussed in the last uh, point. Uh, this is very important. Leader will know the people and look out for their well-being. And he will keep the workers informed, uh, informed about all the progress in the teamwork. And he will have the even personal details. For, uh, for instance, you know the bird eh? their anniversary in case you work in a later part of your life, anniversary, some other functions. Because when you connect your team members with certain personal level, you will become so intimate and the credibility will increase. When the credibility increases, you can expect them to perform much, much better than a normal person. So that's what you have to look for their well-being as well as keep and if there is a progress, means you should inform them. Sometimes the team member will never inform the fellow uh, team members about what is happening. What, because only leader will attend the meeting, right? Team members may not know what is happening. So it is the important duty of a leader to appraise what is happening in the company or in the organization. And he has to keep keep them informed so that they feel connected. Otherwise, they will feel that they are completely disconnected. But how? See, some leaders, they'll go to the meeting. They'll say that all the work they only they have done, 
their team members didn't do anything. So he wanted to pay complete credit to him instead of giving to the team. Once if it is known to the team members, the next moment onward, they will not work anymore. Then you will lose the entire confidence from the team and they don't work anything. So you have to be very careful and you always give credit to them so that it will just motivate them to work well. That's what you should develop a sense of responsibility in your workers means you should make them responsible for their own given task. See, as a leader, you will delegate the work to the team. You should train the team in a such a way that they take the complete responsibility for their work instead of simply blaming others. They take the ownership of the work given to them. It is your duty to train in such a way. And uh, eighth one is the leader, good leader has to ensure tasks are understood, supervised and accomplished. See, you give instruction to the team members. It is your duty to confirm that the team members have understood the way you wanted, you want them to understand. In case you have given something they understood in a different way and the product will be entirely something different. So you have to ensure that whatever you wanted to communicate, it was reached to them properly. That's what if you go back to the communication process, you should ensure that you have communicated effectively. You should confirm it with certain feedback that your message has you no know, reached to them properly. And once if it is done, the next thing you cannot see that I have given the work you do that. They may not do. Because normal members may not do. They, they, may, they may be lethargic. So it is your duty to supervise. That's why we have managers, supervisors. Why do they do? They will supervise. Chief minister, he supervises the entire ministers. Ministers, they supervise their subordinates. And because one person cannot do everything. He delegated the work to everybody. The top leader will supervise the, his subordinates. In that way, the ladder goes till the lower level. But if there is a lack of supervision, the work will not happen. They have only the corruption, all other unnecessary, dishonest uh, practices will get into the picture because the leader could have never checked whether the, or the employees are doing the work properly. If he does the proper checking, and he can avoid a lot of mis mis what you call handling of things. And finally, he has to keep motivating them to achieve the end result as the ultimate steps. And you cannot train as an individual. There are 10 members in your team, or 100 members, 1,000 members, lakh members, or crore. You should train them as a common team, not as individual. If you train as individual, it becomes by asking things. So you should take everything as a whole lot as a one. You should train because it happens in the normal basic company teams. Manager will have a biased opinion about certain people. He will always give importance to one person. One person over the other person, then it will create a kind of what you call. This will disturb the harmony of the team. Once the harmony of the team is disturbed, you cannot expect that team will work for to achieve the goal. Then you have to use the full capabilities of your organization means whatever the resources are available at your disposal, you should use the entire uh, resources to make the team to work 100% very efficient. Whatever the facilities given by the company, you make sure that you have disposed to those things to your team and they'll use all those facilities. Say, for instance, you work in a software industry, you, you require a new laptop. It's your responsibility to procure it and to give it to the company, to the, your team. In case without giving that, you can't expect them to work very well. So you should use the full capabilities of your organization. If there is a possibility to get the new one, please get it and give it to them so they work faster than the normal way. So these are the top 10, 10 principles of leadership. And here you can, a certain overlap will be there. Just quickly, you can lead it uh, again. This is for world leadership. Someone who is in the very superior level. These are the principles. They almost many things will be the same, but still they have given in a different dimension that top leadership follows only uh, these, they, what you call principle. First one, lead by example and the focus on change. 
be human and admit a mistake, understand the value of listening, develop your skill, promote diversity. Actually, you can see why I have brought this particular slide. If you look at all these things, there are many overlap will happen. So you can understand that leadership is all about with certain five to ten skills. If you have it and you can emerge as a, from a normal team leader, uh, what do you call it? A normal leader, team leader, middle level leader, and a top leader. Almost the skills are the same. Only the delegation of the work and the expectation and the destination will be the different. That's it. But actually, the work will be almost the leadership principles will be uh, around the 60 percent. It will be overlap. What does it mean? That overlap help us that whatever the leadership you do, that will be sufficient for you from a normal leader to become a great leader also. But for some, you may be a normal leader. But after some time, when you become a great leader also, the skill which you are acquiring now, which you have now, it will definitely help you once you reach the great position. This is a small uh, uh, comparison between a manager versus a leader. Look at that. Uh, there is a. This is the managerial skill. This is the leadership skill. Look at there and you can see. We'll take only one thing. For example, manager just tells. Or leader sells. Manager just makes. The leader breaks. Breaks means see manager will go with the stipulated rule, but leader will try to create his own rule. He will break the already existing one. He will create the new one. And manager will blame others, but leader takes on himself. The manager is also a leadership role only, but you can understand whether manager is behaving as a leader or as simply he's behaving as a manager. When he exercises his leadership skill, he will do all these stuff. When he wants to become a mere manager, he will do these things. So you have to decide whether you want to be a manager or a leader. Only those who are a leader can go to the greater heights in the organization. If you stick to only managerial quality, you will not be able to become a great leader in your organization ladder. Okay, up to this point, do you have you got any doubt? Any questions? No, sir. Fine. Okay, can you answer me? What is negotiation? Any idea what is negotiation? Sir, negotiation means bargaining of anything, just like uh, bargaining of prices. If anyone sells at higher price, but we know that the price is not fair, then hmm. we do negotiation with them. Oh, good. But actually, a yeah, negotiation is a dialogue between two parties to resolve conflicts or issues so that both parties find the solution acceptable. As you rightly pointed out, a seller says, I would sell this phone only at 20,000. I ask you, you give me for 18,000. Probably after certain negotiation, both of us, we may agree to get it. I, I may agree to sell it for 18,500. You may also agree to get it for 18,500. That's what finally we will reach a solution acceptable for both parties. That's very important. It is not only to one party. That solution will be acceptable to both parties. That's what the negotiation is. And it, uh, it is a compromise involving give and take. Because when I give, you know, even though why I come down to the 1,000 rupee or why you increase 500 rupee, there are certain advantages will be there because we will compromise on our prices uh, to get the better uh, 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 price. See, I know that this mobile was 20,000. You know that uh, you can sell it for... 20,000, but immediately you want to sell it. So you initially you said 18,500, 18, but I am asking you, I'll pay only uh, 17,500. Then you may say that, no, no, actually this is our 20,000 worth mobile. And uh, for you, I can give you a, a, a final price. I can give it as 18,000. Then I may think that, okay, this is over 20,000 worth mobile. I'm getting it for 18,000, let me buy. So here I am also happy. And the seller, you are also happy. That is how give and take happens in the negotiation. If you take in the business environment, there are so many big level negotiation happens, even in the political parties during the election. Once the election is over, the particular party 
the uh, the the sin have the majority they'll negotiate with the other other part parties to support them and they'll share the what you call ministry ministry post and other things finally they'll come to a conclusion same way in the business negotiation a yeah, company acquires a new company they'll go with the negotiation they the bid price will be something then their offer price will be something else finally they will come to one cons consensus the uh, deal will be sealed at that particular price because uh, uh, sometime uh, this is about business and other things sometime even a normal problems conflicts also can be resolved through negotiation it's a kind of a conflict uh, management sometime two parties are having issues so at that time you will bring the two party and uh, a leader who would uh, what you call be the catalyst for the negotiation he will try to sort out the issues between the two teams or two person and finally both parties will go with the win win situation win win means you also happy i am also happy win lose win lose means i will win you will lose lose win then again same way vice versa it will change win win or win lose or lose win lose win means you lose i win and lose win from this my my end lose win i lose you win another case quite opposite that's it but actual negotiation has to happen both parties should reach win win situation in the business term it is called win win situation this is what negotiation what are the negotiation skills in case you want to negotiate what are the things you need to do okay let me tell one of you tell me just you want to bargain how do you bargain what are the skill set you will exercise for the bargaining any one just tell me you want to go you are going for a market sir we should have a strong reason on our side okay you you should have a strong reason on your side very good anything else you should have a strong analytical view you should have a strong database See, when somebody says this mobile is 20000 you should know the original actual price of this mobile what are the other competitor prices so that you will be able to negotiate him see if you say 20000 why should i buy your mobile i will buy the other one other one is with the same facility it is available for 19000 so you should bring in some other associated information also when you negotiate if you don't have so, such kind of information you will fail in your negotiation so first thing in the negotiation you should be a better communicator you should speak better you speak convince convincing skill you have to there you have to speak in a such a way that other party accepts your typical bid offer second thing you need to strategize just like that you cannot negotiate as well be pointed out you need to have certain database with the available data with the logic you need to strategize your negotiation you should attack them with the data you can't simply say that you give it to 18000 right? that's what see when you ask this phone for 18000 for instance you should say phone a is 17500 phone b is 18200 phone c is 18100 phone e is 18000 and phone f is 17900 but all other all the other phones have you no know, they have better features than this why should i buy buy this for 18000 let me go for the other phone for the 18000 itself so when you attack with this kind of data immediately the the person who will think oh my god the other competitors are also are in the market they have the similar features if i miss the opportunity i may not be able to sell my product let me sell this is what he will become scared go to strategy you have strategy standard in case you don't have any strategy no 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 you give me for 18000 without any reason you ask them to give for 18000 who will give that is called completely working on a blind knowledge that will never work you need to strategize next is planning you need to start you you can't just like that uh, immediately say that this particular price for example 20000 you can't immediately ask them for give it for 10000 nobody will think you start somewhere around the probably 16000 or 16500 then you can go or you can you no know, enhance you can increase your price up to another 1000 so 16500 till you can come to 17500 so you need to have some planning that is from the uh, seller end in the buyer end also you need to think you no know, probably somebody says 18500 you ask them probably again same way another 2000 rupees you ask them less 
then uh, after certain negotiation, you may come to reach a one price where both parties will be happy. So for that, you need to plan effectively. And persuasion, that's what I already told you that as a convincing skill, you should speak, you know, in case you go to the normal market and all, you can give, they'll talk very personally. You know, sometimes in a normal buying market, if you go to the market and all, uh, they'll use certain, what you call relationship uh, strategies, they'll use, uh, give brother, or uncle, you are good, aunt, you are being very nice. Some, some things, they'll try to use some words to personally connect them. Then because of that, otherwise they say that I am also from your place only. In case you say that you are from Delhi, then I'll say I am also from Delhi. In which place in Delhi? Then you start, you start asking certain questions related to Delhi. Then you'll become personally connected. Then you'll ask, please, give to, for me, why don't you give me a special discount 20%? Then he will be personally connected with Then he may think, okay, let me give. You are from also from my place. Let me give another 10%, or 15%, something he'll say. So these kind of personal level connection you need to create. This is one type of persuasion to get the price or get the things done on favor, what you call on your favor. And listening, obviously you should first listen there uh, clearly what they are saying, then only you'll be able to understand and strategize. You should solve problem solving. That's what, see, negotiation is obviously at the end it will solve the problem. So far that you should understand what is the damage will happen in your side, what is the damage will happen in another side because of the decision you're going to make. If the decision, whatever the decision you have made, if it solves the problem of the both end, that's a good, good solution. In case it solves only your problem, but it doesn't solve the other party problem, then that is not a good decision. That party will not accept it. So when you make a decision, you should keep both party problems in your mind, then only you need to take a political decision. And another important thing, negotiation skill, a lot of people, they lose negotiation only because of poor emotional intelligence. Whereas somebody will become highly successful because of their good emotional intelligence. They know how to play with emotions. They don't lose the temper. They don't use unnecessary words. They speak. They think twice before they speak. Somebody, they use words just like that. They will agree with the other party. The other party would never agree to do. But uh, other, somebody who is very good at communication and emotional intelligence, they'll make the other party to accept to be, uh, accept the bid which is given by the opposite party. So that way, generally, they work very well. And emotional intelligence, you should study the people. What do they expect? How do they behave? Accordingly, you have to change your behavior uh, for your nego best negotiation. And uh, this one... Distributive negotiation, it is not necessary to just to leave it. Okay. So these are the, uh, what do you call, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven negotiation skills you need to have if you want to become a, if you want to emerge as a better negotiator. This negotiation can be used in any, any place, the original workplace, normal buying, selling, or a big dealing everywhere. The level of issue may be different, but for the skills, the skills, all these skills you need to use the same way. But the, the intensity of the problem may differ, but the skill set you need to use the same thing. And uh, the last one is conflict management. And then when our class will be over, it is 250 or 255. Can someone tell me? Okay, I'll just let me take only two minutes extra. So the conflict management, it's a, see, it, can someone identify the difference between negotiation and conflict management? Any idea? How conflict Sir, management? Sir, in negotiation, um, both the parties are in win-win situation. Hmm. But in the conflict, one is not in win situation, sir. So we have to make it, it in, uh, we have to convince them so that we both get it win-win situation. So it is easier for us to uh, get this goal by yeah. uh, solving this conflict and See, also took them in win-win situation. Basically, negotiation may not start with a conflict. Even without conflict, a normal way also negotiation will take place. But conflict management will start with conflict because otherwise there is no need of conflict management. 
So already there is a problem. So you need to solve it. But whereas in the negotiation, it may not be a problem. If it may be in the both side, it is in a article floating level. But whereas in conflict management, already conflict could have escalated. So now you are in a position, or, or you or the other party has been in a position to settle that conflict. It will be, it requires more skill than normal negotiation. Because already the problem erupted, problem actually it has erupted. So you need to settle, uh, set it out. It cannot happen just like that. You have to be very cool and composed, and you should have more data than whatever you require for a negotiation. Look at there. These are the. I'll let me quickly show you. Yeah. So conflict management almost requires the same like uh, negotiation. Uh, here, the one skill is important in the conflict management is practicing empathy. Because in the negotiation, if you practice empathy, you will lose your negotiation. See, you feel sorry for the other party, then you have to give whatever they ask. But in conflict management, you need definitely you need to practice empathy. Empathy means you have to put yourself into their shoes so that you'll be able to solve the problem. The negotiation, it is not basically a problem solving. It is come to a consensus. Consensus means agreement. But here it is a problem already. If there is a problem popped up, you have to solve the problem. So the attitude has to be entirely different. The empathy plays a vital role to solve the problem. In case you don't understand the problem, how will you solve it? And the another important thing in negotiation, also you require patience, but in conflict management, it requires a lot more than what you do in negotiation. Because negotiation, you will, you will not bargain for hours together. But conflict management may go to days together, years together. Finally, still both party agrees it will continue. But in in the negotiation, the same thing may, may happen. But comparatively, the negotiation will not take more time like uh, conflict management. So here, there is a problem popped up. But in the negotiation, there is no problem. You wanted to come to a con what you call an agreement. That's a, that's a basic difference. So here I would say that the communication is basic for everything. Leadership, uh, and negotiation skill, and then here also. But here only empathy, problem solving, and patience plays a vertical play vital. Okay, so this let me stop. So, uh, body language is the last one we can let me stop here. First, let me, first immediately let me download the attendance. Yeah, in the meantime, if you have a question, you can ask me in case. Let me give me a minute. So then if you have the next two class, you can. Yeah, just a minute. So it is getting down. But once if it, yes, if you, in case you have a class, you can leave. If you don't have a class, I, I can stay back to answer your queries. Yes. Sir? Thank you, sir. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, can negotiation take a form of conflict when it uh, grows? Serious, sir. Yes, you are absolutely correct. Yes, and the negotiation crosses a certain limit. That's how probably you could have seen suddenly people getting into a big argument and fight, physical assault in the train and buses and somewhere because they could have initially started with a small issue. Suddenly, the negotiation could have negotiation with normal conversation could have get it, could have reached to the conflict. Again, the conflict would have been resolved by the negotiation, but they would not do that. They'll escalate. Finally, it will reach to a very, very worst level. You are absolutely right. You have to be very careful when the negotiation, in case if it goes out of the control, simply you say that, okay, this price is not acceptable to me. I don't want to buy. You have to come out. You should not keep arguing with them. Then it will go to the worst stage. Very good observation. Good. Next, anything else? Yeah, any other questions? If there are no questions, then we can stop. Thank you very much. Have a good day.
థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ సార్